Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, you see, um, what we did last class was uh, uh, to define the notion of a morphism, uh, uh, and the idea of a morphism is that uh, it is a continuous map which should pull back regular functions to regular functions. Okay, that is the uh, that is the definition of a morphism, and then uh, I stated uh, uh, I stated a few results. Let me recall them. So, uh, let uh, x uh, be any variety, any variety. In our case, uh, it means either it's uh, an affine variety or quasi-affine variety. An affine variety, as you know, is an irreducible closed subset of affine space, and we are working over an algebraically closed field. Okay, and a quasi-affine variety is a non-empty open subset of an affine variety. And uh, variety for us at the moment means either an affine variety or a quasi-affine variety, which means either an irreducible closed subset of affine space or a non-empty open subset of an irreducible closed subset of affine space, and uh we saw we saw that uh, 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 if x is affine okay then uh, the um, then a x and o x are isomorphic so ax is the uh, the coordinate ring of x uh, the ring of uh, 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 the ring of polynomial functions on x which is gotten by taking the ring of all polynomial functions of the affine space in which x is sitting inside modulo the ideal uh, of x which is a prime ideal and ox is supposed to be the ring of all uh, regular functions on x okay and uh, we we saw that if x is an affine variety then there is an isomorphism like this right and um, mind you uh, this isomorphism is not just an isomorphism of rings it is an isomorphism of k algebras okay it is an isomorphism of rings it is also an isomorphism of k vector spaces okay it is a k algebra isomorphism and uh, of course uh, uh, ox was defined to be the ring of regular functions on x and uh, regular functions were defined to be functions which were locally given by quotients of polynomials okay now we then uh, i told you that uh, the the 
uh, we defined uh, uh, then the notion of a morphism of one variety into another variety and what we did was uh, uh, we showed the set of morphisms of varieties from x to a1 uh, or let me put y to a1 is isomorphic uh, uh, or let me let me again put x uh, or let me put y okay y to a1 is isomorphic it can be identified with oi uh, for any variety for any variety y uh, namely uh, every regular function which is a map from y to k okay is uh, is the same as a morphism from y to a1 where k is thought of as a1 uh, which means that a1 is just k with the Zariski topology and the Zariski topology there of course is you know it is a complement finite topology it is a topology for which the open sets are complements of finite sets the closed sets are only finite sets okay. Uh, so and I told you that this uh, 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 this can be generalized that this statement can be generalized uh, so you know this statement can be written as morphisms of varieties from uh, uh, x so let me let me go back to uh, um, so let me again write y um, to a1 is isomorphic to this can also be written as morphism of uh, k algebras from uh, O of A one K to O of Y because this O of A one K is actually isomorphic to K X. O of A one is just the uh, uh, O of A one is the same as A of A one, okay, and uh, uh, and A of A one is K of X. It is a polynomial ring in one variable okay. So if you want uh, if you want I can write I am I am I am using the fact that uh, you know uh, O and A are the same for an affine variety. So if you want I will write this is this can be identified with A of A1 and uh, uh, um, and that is uh, that is isomorphic to Kx. And the all possible k algebra homomorphisms from the polynomial ring kx to any any k algebra is in bijection with the elements of that k algebra, okay? Because this is the universal property of the polynomial ring in one variable, okay? Namely, any k algebra homomorphism from kx to oy is completely controlled by what by the image of x, okay? It's controlled by the element of oy that x goes to. And therefore, you will have as many k algebra homomorphisms as there are elements in OY. So this set is the same as OY. Okay. So I'm just translating the statement like this, using the universal property of the polynomial ring in one variable. And then I told you that uh, more generally, you can also write it as uh, what I've written for A1. You can write it for A n. And not only for a n you can write it also for an any affine variety okay. So uh, the statement is morphism of varieties from y to a n can be identified naturally with morphisms of k algebras uh, from O of a from uh, a of a n. to oy uh, and uh, what I can do for a1 uh, uh, and I have done for an I can do it also for an irreducible closed subset of an namely an affine variety so I can also write it as morphism of varieties y comma x is isomorphic to uh, is natural is in a natural bijective correspondence with morphisms of k algebras from a of x 
to O y okay where of course x is uh, where x is of course an affine variety okay. So this is the most general statement this is the most general statement okay. So in this general statement if you put x equal to a n you get this statement if you put x equal to a 1 you get this statement which actually so if you put x equal to a 1 it boils down to this statement that regular functions are nothing but morphisms into a 1 okay regular functions are no different from morphisms into a 1 right. So what I am going to do is uh, this is a very very important statement okay because as I told you at the end of the previous lecture that this is the statement that gives an equivalence of categories between uh, on the one side the category of affine of affine varieties with morphisms being morphisms of affine varieties on and on the other side the category being the category of uh, finitely generated k algebras that are integral domains with morphisms being k algebra homomorphisms. So what I am going to do is I am really going to uh, focus on proving this fact okay so that is what I am going to do now it is a very important fact. So uh, uh, proof of uh, uh, proof of the statement morphisms let me rewrite it again uh, varieties from y to x isomorphic uh, here of course this means uh, there is a bijection of sets okay this, this what you have here is a set what you have there is a set but the point is that this side represents the geometric side the algebraic geometric side this side represents the uh, commutative algebra side okay and as usual uh, uh, whole point about uh, algebraic geometry is that you go from the uh, you know from the geometric side to the commutative algebra side uh, this translation is very important in algebraic geometry okay. So what I am trying to do is I am trying to prove this uh, this is the algebraic geometric side morphism of varieties from y to x and here is the commutative algebra side which is morph morphisms as k algebras of uh, a y a x to o y. So this is this is what I am going to prove okay. So uh, I am going to prove that there is a bijection like this there is a natural bijection like this now how do I do that. So, so define alpha from morphism so again let me write this down I define a map like this first I define a map like this which is uh, if you give me a morphism uh, phi of varieties from y to x this is an element on this side I have to send it to something here and you know uh, 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 what I am going to send it to here is uh, a very natural thing it is it is the thing that characterizes what a morphism is a morphism is a continuous map which is supposed to be uh, as, uh, as uh, considered as a pull back map something that pulls back regular functions to regular functions. So what I am going to do is I am going to just take the uh, pull back pull back via phi of regular functions and what does that mean it means so the notation for that is phi upper star which is a map from regular functions on y to regular functions on x okay. So this is my map so uh, what is so what is it that is going what is it that is happening if you give me uh, if you give me a regular function uh, f uh, on y I get uh, the pullback of that regular function to x is a regular function on x uh, this is the defining property of a morphism apart from its continuity and what does this mean this is just composition. So you know you have you have y uh, to x you have this map uh, you have this morphism phi and um, f is a regular function on y uh, I have uh, yeah I have messed up x I have, I have 
mixed up x and y this should be x and this should be y. So you have a regular function on x f is a regular function on the target so it is uh, if you want f is a morphism into a1 uh, or it is a regular function into k okay and then uh, what is a pull back it is this map which is the composition this is first apply phi then apply f okay this is uh, this is a, this is otherwise called as phi upper star of f this is the pull back and the fact is that if you have a regular function on the target uh, by composing with the morphism you should get a regular function on the source the target is x so give me a regular function on x I am by composing with phi the pullback will be a regular function on y this is the definition of a morphism okay this is part of the definition of the morphism and mind you that this ox can be this ox can be uh, uh, can is it can be canonically naturally identified with ax in fact I should even put equality okay ox is the same as ax right uh, so here also when I say that if x is affine then ax and ox are isomorphic uh, in fact you can say that they are in fact they are equal okay uh, if you think of them as functions into k uh, with into a1 with which is k with the Zariski topology they are equal actually so there is actually an equality here right and so it is very clear that I have a very natural map given any morphism look at the pullback map which takes regular functions to regular functions and it is very easy to see that uh, uh, this pullback map is of course a k algebra homomorphism because you know phi upper star of f f1 plus f2 will be phi upper star of f1 plus phi upper star of f2 and uh, phi upper star of f1 into f2 will be phi upper star of f1 into phi upper star of f2 you can easily verify that this what you get here is not just a map from ax to oy but that is a k algebra homomorphism because functions by the definition of functions uh, everything is done point wise sum of two functions uh, is defined point wise uh, product of two functions is defined point wise multiplying a function by a scalar is a new function which is also defined point wise. So you can easily check that this is a this is certainly a k algebra homomorphism okay what we need to prove is that this map uh, so uh, I have written alpha but uh, well so uh, so this is alpha of phi but the better notation is phi upper star okay uh, but since I have written alpha here I will also write it here alright and what will I have what do I ha what will I have to prove I will have to prove that this map is injective I have to prove this map is surjective that is all I have to do alright. So let us let us uh, let us try to prove the injectivity let us try to prove the surjectivity so uh, I guess the injectivity is very easy. So, uh, so what is the situation? Uh, suppose there are uh, suppose I have two morphisms which give rise to the same K algebra homomorphism uh, upon uh, as pullbacks of uh, regular functions. Then I have to say that these two are the same. Okay. So, suppose uh, alpha of phi one is equal to alpha of phi two, which is the same as saying that you know phi one upper star the same as phi 2 upper star okay I will have to show phi 1 is the same as phi 2 right we need to show uh, uh, we need to show that phi 1 is the same as phi 2. So you have to show that these two morphisms are one and the same and what do you mean by equality of morphisms by equality of morphisms means equality of the underlying maps as sets okay equality is just a set theoretic maps so it is a set theoretic checking that you have to uh, do okay. So uh, so how do I check two maps are equal I check two maps are equal by evaluating them at every point and showing that they are equal. So what I do is uh, well so here is my situation so I have so I have y uh, so there are these two maps phi1 and phi2 which are morphisms into x and mind you x is an affine variety x is an affine variety which means that uh, uh, x is sitting inside x is an irreducible closed subset of a suitable an so let us consider that it is it is sitting inside 
it is an irreducible closed inside some a n okay and uh, let us let us uh, uh, let us put let us put coordinates on this a n okay uh, uh, let let me say with coordinates uh, 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 t 1 etcetera t n let these be the coordinates on a n all right. So, the when I say a n with coordinates t 1 etcetera t n what it means is that I am just saying that if you take the if you take the uh, ring of uh, uh, polynomial functions on a n I am identifying it with k polynomial ring in t 1 etcetera t n okay this is what it means. The choice of variables in the ring of polynomials in a n those variables uh, the choice of variables will also give you the uh, labels for the coordinate functions okay and uh, uh, what happens is that you know this is a this is an irreducible closed subset therefore uh, uh, this if I go mod the ideal of x which is going to be a prime ideal I am going to get a of x okay. So, it is going to be uh, uh, so this is the this is the polynomial functions on a n restricted to x okay uh, to get the ring of functions on x I will have to go modulo the uh, ideal of x which means I will have to identify two functions on x uh, if and only if they differ by uh, a function that is 0 on x and that identification corresponds to going modulo i of x okay. Um, and uh, so you know under this uh, uh, under this map uh, you know all the every x i any uh, any t i will go to some t i bar okay if you want uh, thought of as uh, an element here okay and mind you t i bar is uh, geometrically t i bar is just the coordinate function t i restricted to x. So, this t i bar is just t i restricted to x okay actually what is this quotient map given any polynomial uh, given any polynomial consider it as a function on the affine space and restrict it as a function on x that is this quotient this restrict this quotient map is actually restriction geometrically it is a restriction of polynomials to a closed subset this closed subset x okay. And uh, uh, how do I check these two maps are equal I check uh, these two maps are equal by uh, looking at the image of a point. So <coughs> let me take a, a point small y okay the point small y will go to uh, under phi 1 it will go to phi 1 phi y uh, uh, and which is a point it is going to be a point of x and under phi 2 it is going to go to phi 2 of y which is a point of x again okay and both phi 1 of y and phi 2 of y are going to be points in affine in space so they are going to have coordinates. So uh, let uh, phi 1 of y be well uh, lambda 1 etcetera lambda n because it is a after all phi 1 of y lies in x and after all it is a point in n space it is given by n coordinates okay and phi 2 of y is say given by mu 1 etcetera mu n these are the coordinates of this point okay and what I will have to prove is that if phi 1 star phi 1 upper star equal to phi 2 upper star then I will have to show that these lambdas are the same as the mu's which will say that the point phi 1 of y and phi 2 of y are one in the same point and if I and since y was arbitrary it would tell you that phi 1 and phi 2 are one in the same map okay. So, uh, so the, uh, the, the, the point that one has to understand is that uh, what is the meaning of uh, phi 1 upper star equal to phi 2 upper star. So, phi 1 upper star is the pullback map from the ring of functions on the target the regular functions on the target to the regular functions on the source. So, it is from a x to a y uh, to o y of course a x is the same as o x because x is a fine okay. So, the pull the, the this is the pullback okay and what does the pullback map do uh, given a function uh, given a regular function on x I compose it with 
this to get a regular function on the source <laughs> that is how the pullback map works take a regular function on the target compose it with the map <coughs> you get a regular function on the source. So, uh, so in particular you know the the T i's okay restricted to x they are also regular functions on the target mind you a x is a x is uh, the same as o x because x is affine. So, these T i bars they are regular functions on x the coordinate functions they are just the coordinate functions on the affine space restricted to the irreducible closed subset x okay. So, <coughs> if I take each of these T i bars which are which is the same as T i restricted to x they will go to this the it will go to phi 1 upper star of T i <coughs> okay and uh, what is given to me what is given to me is phi 1 upper star is the same as phi 2 upper star. So, what it what it means is that phi 1 upper star equal to phi 2 upper star means <coughs> that this is the same as phi 2 upper star of T i bar for every i this is what it means this is what is given to me okay. Now just think for a moment what is the meaning of phi 1 upper star of T i bar V 1 upper star of T i bar is the regular function on y which is gotten by pulling back the regular function T i bar on x and what does what does pull back do pull back is this composition with phi. So, what this means is it means that <coughs> uh, uh, phi upper star of f as you see phi upper star of f is f circle phi okay is just composition. So, if you translate that you will get T uh, T i bar composition phi 1 is equal to T i bar composition phi 2 <coughs> this is true for every i this is what it means. Now, now this is an equality of regular functions on y so apply it to the point small y. So, what you will get is T i bar of phi 1 of small y is equal to T i bar of phi 2 of small y. So, this will tell you that T i bar of phi 1 y is equal to T i bar of phi 2 y okay. But phi 1 y is uh, 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 phi 1 y has these lambdas as the coordinates phi 2 y has mu as the coordinates and uh, if, if you take a point like this <coughs> the action of T i bar on that point is to give you the ith coordinate okay it is just T the function T i on a fine space picks out the ith coordinate of the point when you evaluate it at a point. So, if you do that <coughs> what I am going to get is that I am going to get lambda i is equal to mu i and this is going to true be true for all i and this implies <coughs> that uh, phi 1 of y is equal to phi 2 for all y in y and that tells you that phi 1 equal to phi 2 okay. So, uh, so if alpha phi 1 equal to alpha phi 2 then you get phi 1 equal to phi 2 and that is injectivity okay. The slightly more uh, uh, involved uh, part of the proof is the surjectivity, namely to show that if you give me a k algebra homomorphism from A x to O y, it arises from a morphism, okay. And of course, when once you prove it arises from a morphism, we are already saying that that morphism is unique because we already proved uniqueness. That is the injectivity. Okay. So, uh, surjectivity will uh, is what we have to see next. So, how does one do the surjectivity? So, uh, so what I am going to do is I am going to start with so here is my situation uh, I have these morphisms of varieties from y to x I have this map alpha and on this side I have morphisms of k algebras from A x <coughs> which is the same as O x to O y. Okay, and I am trying to prove surjectivity of this map. I have already proved injectivity. So what I do is I start with, I start with uh, 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 with the k algebra homomorphism zeta. Okay, so zeta 
I start with an element here zeta is a k algebra homomorphism from A x to O y. <coughs> I start with the zeta and I am trying to show that there exists a phi such that alpha of phi namely phi upper star is the same as this zeta this is what I have to prove okay. So, so but, but what is A x? A x is if you look at it carefully A x is just k t 1 t n mod i x okay and so this A x is just k t 1 etcetera t n mod i x okay this is what it is. In fact uh, so it is k t 1 bar etcetera t n bar it is it is generated uh, by the images of the T i's okay it is it consists of just polynomials in the T i bars that is all okay. And uh, so in so, so in particular you know you have these elements T i bars which uh, as you know are just the polynomial functions T i restricted to x okay and what you do is <coughs> you take their images under zeta they will go to some uh, uh, you know uh, let me look at it for a moment uh, they will go to some f i's and these f i's will lie in o i okay. See after all uh, the T i bars are regular functions on x okay and zeta is a ring home of some it is a k algebra homomorphism. So, it is going to take an element here to an element here. So, if I take T i bar it is going to give me an element there and what is an element there it is a regular function on y. So, f i is the image under zeta of the T i bar for every i okay. So, the model of the story is very simple the model of the story is the moment you give me a k algebra homomorphism from k a x to o y the n coordinate functions on a x which are actually the n coordinate functions in the affine space in which x is sitting restricted to that uh, x they automatically give you a bunch of n functions on o y okay. What does what does it mean to give you n regular functions on o y it means that you are giving n maps uh, into k n scalar maps into k on y but that means what you are trying to do is if you think about it for every point of y if we evaluate this n maps you are getting an n tuple of points okay. So, you can see that this should give you a map from y to a point to a n and that will be the map that will be that will be the morphism that you are looking for okay that is how you get the surjectivity. So, so we will have to use these f i's to define a map from y to a n okay by simply evaluating a point of y at uh, these f i's and putting them as coordinates okay. So, you will get a map from y to a n and then we will easily see that the map will actually factor through x and we will prove that the map is a morphism and we will prove that <coughs> the alpha of that map is zeta okay. Therefore, we will get the surjectivity of zeta okay. So, so let us do that. So, what I am going to do is let me rub this side off. So, I mean what you should remember is uh, that the, the moment you are given uh, uh, n regular functions on a variety you must always remember this whenever you are given n regular functions of on a variety you are actually uh, given a map of that variety into a n this is the idea okay. <coughs> so, what so let me write this down define uh, phi uh, let me use psi from y to a n by y going to f 1 y f n y ok. This is a this is a this is a well defined map because the f i's are all regular functions on y if you evaluate a point of y at any of the f i's you are going to get a scalar you are going to, going to get an element of k and this is an n tuple of elements of k. <coughs> so, it is a point in a n 
which is just kn with a Zariski topology and uh, here is my map all right now the first claim is is that uh, psi uh, maps into x the first claim is that psi maps into x this map is not just going into a n but it is going to go into the irreducible closed subset x of a n it is going to go into it is going to go into uh, this irreducible closed close subset that is because it came from zeta as you will see. So how do I show psi maps into x so it is very simple uh, so how do you so what does it mean to uh, how, how does one verify this you have to show <coughs> that give a point of given a point of small y I given a point small y of capital Y the corresponding point psi of small y is a point in of a n which actually lies in x this is what you will have to show but how do you show a point of a, a n find space lies in a reducible closed subset you will show that by showing that that point is in the common 0 locus of the ideal of x how do you show a point of a n lies in a closed subset you will just have to show that it is a common 0 of the ideal of that closed subset. So all I have to do is I will take a point small y in capital Y I will take its image under psi which is this okay and then I have to verify that this point the point with this coordinate these coordinates satisfies every uh, equation every polynomial in the ideal of x okay so that is what I will have to do so so let uh, g belong to uh, ideal of x <coughs> let g be in the ideal of x mind you g is a polynomial in n variables t1 tn g is a polynomial in so many variables okay then uh, g restricted to x is actually g bar is is 0 in ax which is just k t1 etc tn by ix obviously an element in the ideal if you take its image in the quotient it is, is 0 but then you see uh, from ax I have this map zeta I have started with the map zeta which is a k algebra homomorphism from ax to oy okay zeta is what I started with and zeta is a k algebra homomorphism in particular it is a ring homomorphism and a ring homomorphism will take 0 to 0 okay so moral of the story is that if I take 0 which is g bar under if I apply zeta I will get zeta of g bar is 0 in o y this is what it means okay so so if I write that down what I will get is I will get zeta of g bar is 0 which means that uh, but so this is if you write it carefully it is g and what is g bar it is this g of uh, uh, so you know uh, now I am going to use the fact that zeta is a k algebra homomorphism okay zeta of g bar is the same as g of t1 bar etc uh, uh, tn bar uh, hmm. so I will have to say something so so let me write write that again zeta of g bar of uh, well if you want okay g t1 bar etc tn bar is 0 okay mind you g is a polynomial in the t's g bar is a polynomial in the t bars okay g bar is a polynomial in the t bars and zeta is supposed to take this to 0 but what how is zeta what does zeta do to the t bars the zeta maps the t bars to the f f's so so this implies that g bar of f1 etc fn is 0 this is what it means you see zeta takes t1 bar to f1 okay and it takes uh, ti bar to fi then it will take a polynomial in the ti bars to the corresponding polynomials in or polynomial in the fi's okay maybe maybe I should just remove this 
maybe I, ju I should just remove this bar because the bar is already inside I should just remove g bar is g of this just the image of g okay I will remove this bar that is superfluous okay. So what this translates to is that g of f1 etc f1 is 0 on and what is this see this is what is g of f1 etc f1 it is it is another regular function on y see no, notice that the fi's are all regular functions on y okay and what is g of f1 etc f1 it is some polynomial in expression in the fi's with coefficients in k okay and you know if you write a polynomial in a bunch of regular functions the resulting thing is also a regular function because a product of regular functions is regular a sum of regular functions is again regular and a regular function multiplied by a scalar is also a regular function because scalar functions are reg are regular functions which are constant okay constant functions are always regular okay so this is certainly a regular function and it is zero in oy so that means if i evaluate it at every point of capital y i am going to get zero so this this will tell you the g of f1 of y etc fn of y is 0 for all y small y in capital y this is what it means a regular function is 0 means uh, if you evaluate at every point it has to be 0 but what does this mean this we this is this is the same as saying that the point f1 y with coordinates f1 y through fn y this point is actually in the 0 set of g okay so what I have proved is but what is this point this is just psi of y I proved that for every small y in capital Y the corresponding point psi y is a 0 of every function g which is an ideal of x and, and, and that tells you that psi lands in x okay. So therefore this map that you got from y to a n actually factors through the closed subset x so you actually have a map into x. Now the next part of the proof is to show that this map is a morphism and I will have to show that this map is a morphism and I have to show that the pullback map, map that it induces is actually your zeta and then I then I would be done alright. So let us let us see how to do that that is also pretty easy to do. okay so um, so here is the next claim the next claim is uh, psi is a continuous map the next claim is psi is a continuous map okay so the so situation is like this I have y I have psi this goes into x which is sitting inside a n and uh, I want to show that this is continuous okay and mind you uh, if I show that it is continuous I am I am actually more or less done showing that psi is a morphism because you know, the moment psi becomes continuous okay then uh, uh, the only thing I will have to check to check that psi is a morphism is that it pulls back regular functions to regular functions but the way we have defined it it is it will follow very trivially that zeta is actually psi star that is alpha of psi that will be very simple to see okay. So actually this is the uh, uh, this is the crucial thing that needs to be verified that it is continuous okay. So the uh, well the uh, to see that that is also pretty easy let me think for a moment. Yeah, so let let me let me uh, uh, so it it probably involves showing that uh, the pullback of the pullback under psi is actually zeta. I need that. So let me let me do that. Uh, so let me write that here. Uh, psi induces zeta, and psi is a continuous map. Okay. How do I explain that psi induces zeta? It's very very simple. So you see, alpha of psi 
which is psi star is going to be a map from A x to O y okay. Uh, in fact I should not say O y you know strictly I should say uh, it I can define for any map from if psi is any set theoretic map from y to x then given any set theoretic function on x I can pull it back to give a set theoretic function on y. So you know what I will do is I will I will I will just write maps from uh, y to k okay and what is this it this is the usual pullback map pullback map exists for any set theoretic map even at the set theoretic level okay. So you see if you give me uh, if you give me any um, uh, uh, polynomial h if you give me any element h uh, which is a polynomial restricted to x actually then h goes to uh, psi upper star of h and uh, what is psi upper star of h is just uh, first apply uh, uh, psi and then apply h this is the map okay and what I want you to understand is that uh, what is this what is this map see if you take if you take a point of y h circle psi of y is h of uh, psi y okay this is by definition psi y has been given a definition this is just h of f1 y and so on fn y because that is what psi y is okay but this is if you look at it h of f1 y fn y if you look at this calculation it is actually zeta of h operating on y because you see zeta of g is g of f1 etc fn so similarly h of f1 etc fn is zeta of h by the same argument so so moral of the story is so so this so this will tell you that uh, psi star uh, it will tell you that uh, uh, and mind you so this will tell you that psi star is actually uh, zeta and uh, it will also tell you that uh, psi star uh, goes into goes just not into maps from y to k it goes into regular functions on y o of y is a sp subset of this is a set of all possible maps from y to k okay just all possible functions they need not even be continuous okay whereas o y is very special these are all morphisms of y into k they are the regular functions on y they are very special okay and the fact that psi star is zeta which you have verified point wise will tell you that uh, and since zeta takes values in o y it tells you that psi star also lands inside not just in this but in this subset okay. So this proves that psi induces zeta okay so the so the only thing to show that the zeta I started with comes from a psi here is to show that actually psi is here namely I should show that psi is actually a morphism okay and what is the defining property of a morphism the defining property of a morphism the, there are two conditions the first condition is the it has to be continuous the second thing is it should pull back regular functions to regular functions the second condition is already satisfied the pullback map induced by psi is already zeta and zeta is uh, pulling back regular functions to regular functions it is it is taking every regular function on x to a regular function on y okay so it is already pulling back regular functions to regular functions therefore the only thing that one has to check is actually that it is a continuous map okay so that is the reason why I said in the beginning that the the essential claim is that it is a continuous map and once you do that you have proved everything you have proved the theorem alright. So uh, how do I check something is a continuous map I uh, will have to just check that uh, you know inverse image of open sets are open or I have to check inverse image of closed sets are closed but that is a pretty easy thing because you see uh, how do you define the Zariski topology on A on X the what is the Zariski topology in X how do you define the Zariski topology you for example you specify closed sub, sub, close subsets given as zeros of polynomials okay. So uh, what is a closed subset of X it is it is given as a common zeros of bunch of polynomials okay and if if you compose those polynomials with psi okay 
those polynomials are regular functions okay therefore if you compose them with psi the resulting things will be regular functions on y and the inverse image will be precisely the locus of those regular uh, zeros of those regular functions on y and what you must understand is uh, uh, the Zariski topology uh, given by uh, the Zariski topology on y coincides with the topology that you get uh, by taking the uh, uh, closed subsets to be common zeros of regular functions you see after all either you can uh, uh, when we started defining the Zariski topology we always took a uh, set of common zeros the of polynomials but then when we went to a general variety or uh, which is which could even be an open subset of a closed irreducible subset then we had to define regular functions and these regular functions were locally given by quotients of polynomials okay and the zero set will be therefore locally the zero set of the numerator polynomial which is anyway closed okay it has got nothing to do with the denominator polynomial okay the zero set of a quotient of polynomials is essentially the zero set of the numerator the denominator polynomial is anyway assumed to be non zero okay otherwise we wouldn't put it in the denominator so what you must understand is if you take a variety okay and if you take a bunch of regular functions on that variety and you take the common zero locus of a bunch of regular functions on that variety the result is again a closed subset of that variety just like common uh, just like closed subsets of affine space are given by common zeros of a bunch of polynomials closed subsets of any uh, any variety are simply given by the set of common zeros of a bunch of regular functions okay and so if you start with the closed subset in here that will be the common zero locus of a bunch of polynomials okay and its inverse image here will be the common zero locus of the bunch of regular functions that are which are pullbacks of these polynomials and that is again closed. So what this argument tells you is that psi pulls back closed sets to closed sets so it is continuous and we are done okay. So, so let me write that down psi is continuous as psi inverse of z of some j is uh, going to be psi inverse of uh, is going to be intersection of uh, okay so if you want I can write the uh, full blown set theoretic thing that you that might that you might so z of j is h inverse of 0 uh, intersection where h belongs to j right what is a 0 set of a, an ideal zero, 0 set is you take this for each element in the ideal each polynomial in the ideal look at its zeros which is h inverse of 0 and you take the intersection this is the common 0 set and you know psi inverse taking inverses behaves well with respect to intersection so this is going to be intersection h belongs to j psi inverse of h inverse of 0 okay and if you see that this is just the 0 set in this is just the 0 set of uh, first apply uh, this is a 0 set of h circle psi uh, intersection of the 0 set of h circle psi where h belongs to uh, uh, j okay and this is closed closed in y. So this implies psi is continuous and since psi is continuous it is it already the map that it induces pulls back regular functions to regular functions so it is a morphism and so I have found I have found uh, psi here I have I have been able to find a psi I have been able to find a psi which goes to zeta and that gives me the surjectivity and I am done with the proof okay so the proof ends here. So the crucial point that you will have to understand is the following which you can think of as you know as a separate exercise if you want I mean it is actually what if you understand it if you have understood it well it is just a tautology but take any variety take a bunch of regular functions okay then the common set of common zeros of those regular functions is a closed subset of the variety okay it is a closed subset because regular functions are locally quotients of polynomials and taking the common zeros 
of such regular functions actually amounts to taking common zeros of a bunch of polynomials namely the numerator polynomials locally okay and uh, that, that that's a fact that you have to understand okay so i'll stop here <laughs>